uh, good afternoon and thank you all of you to join our session we have already 10 minutes late uh, because, uh, we are late because uh, uh, only few participants uh, have joined this session. Now I think uh, 109. So we have enough participant now. So uh, to, uh, in our two, uh, total 10 webinar course, we have already completed our one course uh, networking uh, related to networking devices. Uh, today we are starting our second course, uh, campus network design, network planning and design, campus network, uh, uh, day one. And our instructor today, Urpita Haulada, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer and Communication Engineering, Kotakali Science and Technology University. Uh, Urpita Haulada has uh, completed his uh, Bachelor of Science in uh, Computer Science and Engineering from Kotakali Science and Technology University. And she has also completed her my, my, uh, MS Engineering from uh, Computer Science and Engineering, Depart Engineering Department, uh, Dhaka University of Engineering and Technology, Duet. Uh, she she is now currently currently working as the assistant professor department of computer communication engineering Kotakali science and technology university so we are now starting uh, so i would like to request urpita haulada to deliver his uh, day one seminar uh, webinar course i think you can start now and some notice for all participants so if you have any question you can note down uh, write uh, our zoom uh, question answer box we will try to answer our panel member will try to answer your question or if any remaining question we will discuss after the lecture session and after the uh, uh, lecture and then finish the dis uh, question answer session we will send you the uh, today uh, 10 uh, 10 uh, mcq type question for uh, uh, for your uh, just evaluation of this today's uh, uh, presentation from uh, the question will uh, totally come from the today's presentation so thank you all of thank you all of all of you and uh, welcome to today's uh, seminar i think orpita you can now start thank you sir uh hope i'm clear i think your Hello? voice is not clear clear but some noise hello just hello sir? yes no. yes Yes, now clear. Okay, sir. So I will start today's session. Hello, good people. I am Urpita Halada. I will conduct today's session. First of all, I would like to clear some points regarding this online courses. Uh, already you have attended past hey, online Orpita, courses. Urpita, noise, okay. noise, noise. Uh, uh, some student already mentioned noise, voice noise. Is so, it possible uh, for? Are you using a microphone or directly from laptop? Uh, so I'm using microphone. Okay, but remove the microphone directly use uh, laptop. That would be very much clear because I am currently using the direct laptop uh, microphone. Okay. So uh, remove. Uh, remove the, your microphone from laptop and then so now right now clear but okay, low clear but uh you need to place your you laptop to place your closer laptop to you as as far as possible closer uh sir is it clear hello clear but, but low need, but you need to speak loudly Hello. Or you can increase your volume. Laptop volume. Sir, I can keep on a nice show. I can keep on a show. I can keep clear. Yes. Okay, okay. So actually, I'm using different devices. Okay. Okay, now we can start. Oh, sorry for interruption. Okay, uh, what I was saying that already you have attended the past online courses as our sir said. Uh, but 
think I am. Okay. Uh, through the webinar or online courses uh, embedded under SAFE, uh, we will give you a basic idea of the chosen subject virtually, and you will take some basic knowledge from this webinar. Webinar courses are all of you guys. Uh, after this uh, uh, webinar, you will arrange physical work. We will arrange a physical workshop in Bangladesh. So we will select only 2,000 Bangladeshi potential female participants uh, who have actually, uh, we will take from the evolution after the webinar course. Then hands-on training will be given through workshop or the selected female participants uh, to the uh, selected uh, female participant, but foreign female participants uh, can join the workshop virtual. Our first course was just a basic concept of networking device and tools, but from now, uh, what uh, we will cover in this next uh, nine courses will be demonstrated through practical exercise in this workshop. In that case, uh, you will be requested to watch the slide and videos that will be given to you uh, at the end of the lecture and participant in the exam with more knowledge, uh, you can get better result, obviously. And uh, mostly female participants are highly appreciated to participate in this examination to get chance to particip participate the uh, workshop. Okay, actually, this is our main aim or goal of these online courses. So we can start with our lecture and our uh, today's lecture names or titled Network Planning and Design Campus Network. That means we will actually go through a basic campus network. Uh, <clears throat> Networks allow people to communicate, collaborate, and interact in many ways. We know all of we all know this, right? The networks are used to access web pages, uh, talk using uh, uh, IP telephones, participate in video conference, complete in interactive gaming, shopping using internet. Internet. We maybe we all uh, shop. Um, make our shopping through internet like Amazon, uh, if you have in India or any other country, or through Facebook pages, uh, like uh, uh, our Bangladeshi girls use Shajgos like, uh, and any other uh, dress online shopping, then complete online courses like this and more, right? Uh, for any organization and companies, IT network is the backbone of its business, business or a, like university, as it uh, connects all its computers, related devices together and allows their staff to work more efficiently across the organization. So it's very crucial to design and set up the network properly, right? So if you are wondering how to design a network, uh, like in an organization or where did you work or where you want to go to work or in your campus, then today's session is for you because it aims to help you to understand the basic of good network infrastructure design. And in this session, we'll go through a campus network design as an example with physical device connection and also logical uh, diagram. And this is the first day, but in the second day, we will go through the implementation because the campus network session is divided in two parts, day one and day two. One is about diagram and campus network design with showing the physical campus network that is today. And second is showing the implementation uh, of this network on packet tracer. Hope you will enjoy this today's session. Let's start with the simple definition. But first of all, uh, we will see the course content. So you can see here, there is network design, concept of campus network, requirement analysis, uh, then uh, specification via network diagram and models, and basic campus network design. So what is network 
design. Uh, network design is the planning phase of any organization or uh, company's IT infrastructure that must go through before it is implemented. Uh, that means you have to design it first, then you can implement it. Uh, it involves evaluating and understanding how all the elements of the networks link together. As like we know some devices like routers, switches, uh, server, desktop, PC, laptop, printer, mobile, etc. Okay, and uh, how they can be made to run as efficiently as possible. A well designer can bring increased optional operational ex, um, efficiency and network design is a task that is usually performed by network designer that you can be a network designer or you can be a IT administrator if you work in this networking place and yes, on other related employees. The network design should be uh, drawn as a network diagram is a physical implementation process. So we are going to implement the physical network campus diagram. Okay. So there are a number of details your network infra infrastructure design should show as like a clear map of the network, oh, well, the structure and layout, layout for cabling, uh, cabling requirement that where this router and switch uh, connected and uh, so which cable and how we will uh, connect them. The quantity type, the location of all devices on the network as like you are, uh, if you are in an university then which type of device you are using, where is your place or location, like the halls, administration buildings, etc. Then your IP address structure and details of your network security uh, architecture and processes. Now you can see here in network design, here are some, uh, you can see here, it's a router, this is Wi-Fi router, and this is the internet connection. This router is uh, like the main router that is providing the internet connection to the Wi-Fi router, to the server, and to the switch, and this switch is connected to the PC ring or the another switch that is connected to IP address, PC, scanner, and printer, right? We can see this in one diagram, but uh, when we uh, think it uh, in your real life, we can see it as a diagram, but we use the routers, the switches, and the PC servers, scanner, uh, tablet, phone, etc. So this is another network design where it is uh, organized, like from the internet, uh, it is using the gateway router and then core layer where using uh, the switches or router, then the distribution layer and access layer and the, uh, like here you can see the dormitories, classroom and library. And how we can design this, use this, uh, okay. Okay, then uh, what is network design consideration? That means what is the best practice uh, if you want to design any network? Uh, here are five network design. You can see that uh, that is best practice to ensure you deliver the best uh, network design and uh, your network runs smoothly and ultimately helps the company or university that uh, where you are uh, using the network uh, will perform better. So what should we uh, remark? That is, don't skip the actual design phase. What does it mean? So uh, this is uh, when you are initially working on network planning or designing, you might think in your mind that uh, it's pretty simple to link all of the devices together. That might be true uh, if you only have a handful of things to connect, but everything uh, that is added to or removed from the network will affect your network performance. That would be a uh, great thing uh, to remind. So 
uh, as you have more devices, uh, it comes more complex, right? Then you can just build a network from your head. So you have to, that's when you need to have a physical plan and structural diagram that will ensure that you have the most efficient network and you can plan for a new development and equipment. Then what is the next? Next is plan for future. Why it is plan for future? Uh, if you think that I will design a network for uh, two years, four years, five years, but after that, a significant part of network planning and designing is selecting system that will grow with development of your organization or your business or your company, right? Uh, the links nicely to a second point here. And that is the network infrastructure design is not just about planning the hardware. Um, every new application or pieces of software you deploy will impact your uh, performance on your network as it will require processing power or support or uh, spacing store, right? Uh, when you are using a mobile phone, you are clicking some picture or you are uh, emailing something or you are downloading something, something, something. So you need to have storage. So it is also connected to the network design too. Uh, so the ultimate part of any future plan should be about bandwidth growth. When you are considering any new software and a new impact on your uh, network, you have to think about the new uh, addition. So as we continue the embrace technology, like the internet of the things, video conferencing, collaborating tools, etc., will also keep growing. So you need to think about this future scenario and plan accordingly. Then what is the next? Next is embedded security in your design. Then why will uh, think about it? Uh, I think you all know about the security issues. So network security is no longer the something that you can be considered as a bolt on or afterthought. No, uh, it needs to be abided at the very core of your network design. On the top of this, it must have clear guidance and policies for how it is enforced. Okay, what is the next? Next is monitor your network. So uh, there is an old IT trisium that you can fix when you don't know is break. That's mean, or even what is about to break. That's mean, so what design your network makes you plan for network monitoring. So you know exactly where is going on. Okay, uh, this will help you see problems often before they occur or ensure uh, nothing compares either the performance or security of your network. So think carefully about the system you need to put. And uh, last but not the least, that is you are uh, need finished. What is this? The job of building a solid, reliable IT network is going process. So you may have seen your design as a great solution when you did your initial network design, right? But it may become less attractive as technology evolves and requires new addition. So every time a new technology comes in the market, uh, so you should design your network to be flexible enough to be able to quick adapt useful, uh, money, useful for new tools. So upon this, we can characterize the network. Then what is the characteristics of this network? So you can see the circle, right? This is the network characteristics like topology, then speed, then cost, security, availability, scalability, and reliability. <clears throat> we already said that how network had, uh, have had a significant impact on our regular life. They have changed the way you have live, work, and play. They allow us to communicate, collaborate um, in many ways and never that we have never did before. 
there are many key structure and performance related characteristics that must be considered when we should discuss about networks that is topology we know there is two kind of topologies that is physical topology and logical topology then what is physical topology physical topology is an arrangement right arrangement of cables like network devices routers switch uh, and end system like uh, pcs tablets printer that describe how the network devices are exactly interconnected with wires and cables then what is the logical address logical address the path over which the data is transformed in the network which describe how the network devices appear connected to the network user now the next is speed what we can say about the speed actually this speed is a measurement of data rate in bit per second or per unit time of a given link in the network you are generating a link uh, in this network link uh, per second how many bits is transmitting and about the cost next is cost so we can see here cost what is about this cost indicates the general uh, expense of pursuing of network component and installation maintenance of that networks and blah 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 so on then what is the security this is the main issue right security indicates how protect the network is including the information that is transmitted over the network that's mean you are uh, transmitting sender to receiver information but uh, another uh, third person or hacker can see it it's not secure so you have to and you must to secure your network so the subject of security is important and techniques uh, and practice are constantly evolving considering secure security whenever uh, action are taken that affect the network now the next uh, characteristics characteristics is availability that is availability is the likelihood likelihood that is the network is available for use when it is network uh, required uh, you are requiring and uh, you can use it then next is scalability scalability indicates how easily the network can accommodate more user and data transmission requirement then next is reliability then reliability indicates the dependability of the component that make up the network such as uh, some network devices you can call router switches pcs servers etc right so this all options are network characters characteristics of a network then we will go through our main topics that is campus network design so uh, when we will talk about campus network design uh, first hearing uh, when you first hear or first look at the uh, title that is uh, campus network design in your mind the mind immediately conjures an image of a school or any college or university campus right while it's not wrong but you can also relate this campus network that we will uh, show you in a video or a physical implementation uh, you can relate or you can use the concept of generating new network for your organization or uh, for your company so it does not give the full impression of what it is uh, described it can be described as a single and multiple lan connection over a small geographical area or up to a very large network with thousand of connection if it's university there is, there is lots of students lots of teachers and um, administrative staff so they are using many devices so there is lots of connections so campus area network can be both wired and wireless connectivity the hardware involves on the networking side is switch uh, routers uh, with fiber optic cable or copper cable so 
campus uh, means a college or university campus network interconnect administration building as i said before then you can say the uh, dormitories of the students uh, it can be also dormitories for teachers then uh, faculty uh, faculty members that means teachers uh, or uh, staffs uh, and the administrative peoples uh, or you can use for library and so on for any uh, buildings that is associated with your institutional university. The university campus network interconnects buildings that are house key are we, as we said, the students, right? And the, then the teachers and then the administration staffs. So, uh, a campus uh, word land use a hierarchical design model to break the design up to modular group of layer, breaking the design up into layer always allows each layer to implement a specific function which simplifies the network design depending on the characteristics that we uh, see before uh, of the deployment site you must or you might need one two or three level or tire we can say that this is three tire or two tire okay for example a site that occupies a single building might only require the access and distribution layer but if you have a uh, multiple uh, you have a large network or you have a multiple building in your campus, then will most likely require three layer, that is core distribution and access. We will see it later. Now, uh, I just said about network design, also said about campus network design, but what is the challenges? when we are going to uh, design any campus network, then what we will face? Actually, the physical environments of a buildings or building influence the design. You know, that's mean if you use any Wi-Fi connection or you wire your uh, network, then it may be influenced the design. The connection between devices and computers is limited in size. So you cannot connect a large number of nodes together in a uh, campus area network. So maintenance is expensive. It's all about characteristic network like cost. Then troubleshooting and maintenance of campus area network are expensive as compared to other networks. Then because there is uh, many connection uh, as um, as an example in ps2 there is many halls but there is distance between the halls right or dormitories okay uh, many network are built with unmanaged network equipment that means unmanaged switches where admin's equipment provide no availability for monitoring or uh, tuning the network, you can say, as more apps and data uh, migrate into public cloud service provide network, data flows are changed. Based on increase of you, uh, user uh, for a campus, uh, Wi-Fi uses also increase, so need proper plan and also plan for adoption of new technology. And you can also say that uh, uh, many uh, many networks actually uh, require the net and firewalls. And we will also uh, know about firewalls and why we need to put the firewalls in the ne next slides. Now, though we have some challenges, there is some rules that can be made easy to make you in campus network design then what is this okay the, uh, this is separate your layer that's mean your network layer separation that is uh, it may be two layer or three layer as i said before that is core layer distribution layer and access layer that we'll discuss uh, in first online webinar that is 
uh, that was uh, network devices and tools. They, maybe you all noticed that uh, here they are uh, access layer, distribution layer, and uh, core layer also uh, described. And uh, as I uh, as I said uh, about the characteristics of network, it is also must consider some important points. You can say here the scalability, identify the audience, then coverage area, network devices, uh, devices, then uh, then uh, cost analysis, budgeting, existing inter in infrastructure, performance analysis, etc. Right. So uh, you can, if you say about uh, existing infrastructure, uh, what is, is existing infrastructure, then you can say how many cable uh, we also, uh, we use, then how many port is used for um, any van, uh, VLAN connection, or how many router we will connect, how many uh, source, source will be uh, used, how many access layer must be uh, connected, that all will be uh, updated, right? So we have to design such our campus network that we can update our network uh, as our requirement, okay? And uh, we will also continue about the some protocol about static routing, dynamic routing in next classes like routing and switching class. Uh, hope you will, uh, you all will enjoy also and join the next uh, webinar classes. Now, you can look here. This is a simple network design. If you see here, this, this is ISP network that means internet service provider, that is network border. Then it is uh, using three trier, that means core, distribution, and access. Uh, as I said before, you already have concept about three tier and two tier uh, layer, like uh, access distribution and core layer. Access layer is represent the network is where traffic enters and exit the campus network. Uh, actually, traditionally, a uh, primary function of an access layer switch is to provide um, network accesses to end user or end devices. Like uh, I am an end user for our campus network. Uh, our student uh, is also an end user. They are using their telephone, uh, sorry, your, their uh, PC or laptop or uh, mobile phones, right? And next, we can say about distribution layer. What is distribution layer? Uh, distribution layer in interface between the access layer and the core layer to provide many important functions. And we will discuss it later also when we will see the uh, our um, campus network design or infrastructure uh, video or the figure. Okay. And next is core layer. The core layer is a network backbone. You can say it. Backbone, I think you know all what is backbone, right? It makes us straight or to uh, give us the strong point, uh, strongness. Then it, uh, as like, uh, access layer is also a backbone for a network. So it connects several layers as the campus network. The core layer serves as the aggregator for all of the other uh, campus blocks and uh, ties of campus with the rest of the network. And the primary purpose, uh, what is the primary purpose if I say, then primary purpose of this core layer is to provide fault isolation and high speed backbone connectivity, okay? On an important note, this is important. Why two tier and three tier, as I said. In some cases, uh, where extensive physical or network scalability does not exist, maintaining separate distribution and core layer is not required. Distribution, la uh, distribution layer also can be said as is layer, okay? So in smaller campus location where there are fewer users accessing the uh, network or in 
campus sites uh, con co consisting of a single building separate core and distribution layer may not be needed that's mean we can say they're they're uh, combinedly used or if we you can say it's collapsing okay in this scenario you are seeing that uh, there is core level and distributed level. core level and distributed level, distributed level but for a small network it may be one layer not core separately not core, uh, distributed separately it is it become one single layer okay the recommendation in this alternative two layer campus network design also known as or we can say because we said that uh, core and distributed uh, uh, layer is collapsed so we can say it as a collapsed core network design Mani, that's mean uh, you can see the core layer differently a core layer is also combined with the distribution layer or edge layer so this is two layer that is uh, access layer and distribution layer and when you use three layer for big campus or uh, mm, which is large campus then it is co distributed and access now uh, we can uh, um, we can say something about core versus edge so what is core layer what where is distributed layer let's clear some definitive word core and is right core of the network is initial infrastructure uh, and uh, if we say about is or is layer or is network then simply uh, simplistically we can say that the is network refers to end point user or end device user uh, and provide services inside the individual buildings to individual computers okay uh, in any organization or you can say for any enterprises or you can say for your campus the end points are pieces including their associated uh, printer like um, different kind of adapters you can say or peripherals right are modems are for connecting the connecting to carry um, and various connected device the ace network today not only wired right it includes wi-fi access point two and what is then core network uh, you can say here some point that need to have reliable power and air conditioning maybe have multiple cores always route in the core the core of the network is often in the data centers the backbone or core network then connects the uh, various zones within the, uh, within the data center or you can say other data centers uh, with switches and router you can say see a figure here right here is a data center server and this is a core network that is connected with very much router this is router this is router this is all of these devices are router and this is layer 3 right uh, here uh, high speed network equipment that means we can say that uh, core network is uh, responsible for high speed network okay uh, in hierarchical structure it uh, is simpler uh, sorry similar and can be roughly divided in five category you can say here that is one is data acquisition server it is data center layer hope you can see my cursor okay uh, i think i should use a pointer okay hope you can see this is a data center and next there is a core network layer then uh, uh, is network layer and this is application layer and if i discuss uh, discuss these uh, five points or five layers uh, simply then we can say that what is data acquisition layer data acquisition layer is the bottom which uh, consists of numerous uh, 
sensing device such as smartphones or uh, various type of monitoring or sensing device uh, from where we can acquire the data and what is age network routing uh, layer age layer that is age layer is the at the age of the network which consists of various kind of heterogeneous computer and storage device in addition to data routing capabilities these devices also have some data storage and learning capabilities and uh, core core network what is core network core network uh, is the center of the network which is the backbone of data transmission and communication and this layer use the same network equipment as a network layer but with more computing power larger storage capacity and rich features that is the main difference between core layer and distribution layer okay then we have also here uh, data center layer so data center layer is uh, you can say that um, top of this uh, system and which is composed of large scale devices with huge storage capacity and computing capacity and last is application layer you can see some devices here mobile terminal uh, some uh, rfid uh, some phones the printer here you can see some laptop mobile phone car or etc so application layer is the network infra uh, interface uh, you can say as an example like suppose you are a user and need a service think that you are a user and you need a service uh, then what will do uh, so as an user you will request for a service right when you go uh, any um, shop a shop then you just uh, uh, want to buy something then uh, you asked uh, they are uh, um, salesman that i want to buy this please help me or something else right this is a service request, uh, request. so like this you also request for your uh, for uh, for your service in the uh, network device too how it happened there is no person that you will say that please help me then how did happen uh, as a user you request for service for a higher level right higher level network through various intelligent terminal then superior device that is high level devices forward the request uh, layer by layer and obtain the service from the data center or the upper storage devices and then return to the user that's meant to you as a service okay so uh, in this age uh, network we can see uh, there is a picture uh, and it's a uh, network suppose it's a network and if you want to connect something more that's mean you have to create your age network such that you can add uh, possible switches as your uh, net, uh, company's requirement In, like uh, you are designing a network for a company and it's the first time using five devices but uh, furthermore like after 10 years so five years uh, it will increase and want to or require to add more devices then what can you do that's why you have to configure your network such that switches addition is possible to get the final configuration and you must use or buy switches that is manageable not the unmanaged switch and build a network incrementally as you have demand and money okay so you can see the next image see there is an addition of switches and these two switches also add more devices now here is some difference in previous slide we just uh, learned some concept about is network and core network then what is is router and 
core router and also in next slide we'll see core switch and uh, a switch sorry uh, it, there is a mistake it, it will be a switch Okay, so go through uh, the A's versus the uh, core router. Okay, mainly the routers that make up the backbone of the network, that is called core router. We can say it is a core router. And you can see in this picture, right? You can see this picture. So in this picture, this is the core router and they all are reside within the middle of the network rather than periphery it's periphery right this is the center and the core router is in the middle point but not in the periphery a uh, core router must be able to support multiple telecommunication interfaces of the highest speed uh, in use in the core internet and must be able to uh, forward the packets it may be ip packets at uh, full speed to all of them okay then code router are used to provide high speed data routing uh, and forward packets between routers to manage traffic or prevent packet losses what is packet loss packet loss is uh, if you if a source is sending any packet to receiver and receiver can't receive it uh, because of any collision, because of any interference, because because uh, uh, sources sending using a certain speed, but receiver can take uh, the packets with the same speed. Then it may be causes of also packet loss. Okay, so uh, uh, core router mainly used for this forward packets and manage the traffic and prevent the losses okay on the other hand if we say about something edge router edge router also called as um, access router uh, on the other hand the core router you can say this core router gives some isolation between the subnets and uh, edge router uh, where core router is in the middle but edge router in the periphery of the network you can say this Okay, so A's router works to secure the network A's or you can say protect the core. Uh, how? How can it protect? That uh, it can protect the core by characterizing and um, securing like uh, IP traffic or packets uh, from other A's router as well as core router. So there is the uh, difference between core router and edge router now we can see here core switches and a switches you can think why we are uh, taking some concept or this uh, uh, on this core router core switch core uh, edge router a switch because when we will see something like uh, our campus network design then we see we use a switch core switch core router uh, is or distributed router that's why i am just uh, giving you some little concept on core or distributed uh, because there is no enough time for you to discuss detail uh, that's why we are trying to give you some important concept about core router is router distribution router or the selected topics uh, briefly okay now we say what is core router and what is is uh, sorry uh, uh, what is core switch and a switch a core switch uh, um, you can say it's a high capacity of switch generally uh, position within the backbone or physical core uh, of a network and core switch is also regarded as a um, backbone devices that is uh, vital to the useful operation of the network. It uh, serves as the gateway 
to a wide area network or to the internet so that you can use it to connect your server. Uh, uh, also, you can connect the ISP. When we will see a logical diagram, uh, I just show you some logical, uh, show you the logical diagram. You can say here ISP network, right? Here we use a core switch. That's why we are talking about this core switch. So, uh, what actually core switch do? Co uh, with the core switch, uh, it actually serve as the gateway. We uh, we already said uh, to the network, and so that we can use it to connect to server to ISP via router and to aggregate all switches. Um, uh, we can say an example. What what can say? Um, Okay, assume you have a certain amount of uh, load to manage. Okay, then uh, core switches need to be powerful enough and have significant, um, you can say, it, capacity, capacity to handle the load sent to it. Uh, which means um, you should always be fast and full featured manageable switch, manage switch. But if use any unmanaged switch, then it could be a problem. So we will see campus network logical diagram where we can see the uh, in like next lecture uh, the core switches connection that used to connect the IP ISP via router. Now we can uh, say something about edge switches. And edge switches is a switch located at the uh, meeting point of two, ne two network, at the meeting point, right? This switch connect end usual uh, LAN. I mean, that's when we know that local area network to the ISP. Again, I am repeating this. Please uh, 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 hear concentrately. Uh, that's when the switch connect end user, uh, end user LAN, local area network, to internet service provider network. It refers to as access uh, nodes or service node. Then what uh, exactly um, it does? Actually, an edge switch Cons, uh, connects the client devices like lap, laptop, desktop, um, your um, the printer, your security cameras, and different type of wireless access point to your network. Okay, so core switch and A switch, uh, if we want to select, then what should do? To select the appropriate switch uh, for layer in the particular network you need to make a clear uh, specification regarding current and future node uh, targeting your traffic flow and user community and if you consider these things you can choose your uh, switch uh, it may uh, it may be core switch or it may be a switch so um, uh, it is mainly it's depend on further growing as i said in previous slide and the performance okay now in this uh, slide we will see some uh, basic campus network design here you can see a design that is physical design here we can uh, see a physical diagram that contains some real devices. This is a router, this is a router, this is a switch, uh, this is unmanaged switch, this is router. This is a diagram. Okay. Uh, we will see the physical connection through a video. Uh, here is the video link. And uh, implementation will be uh, discussed with you after... Uh, not uh, after uh, second day that's mean tomorrow okay
actually this is the diagram of physical network uh, i think we have here here you can say it's a physical diagram and it's a logical diagram here you can say core layer right this is the core layer here you can say see the distribution layer this is the distribution layer and here you can see the user layer and from this switch there uh, uh, this is the unmanaged switch this switch and this router these are the user access layer okay uh, after that uh, we will uh, in the next slide we will see the concept of switches concept of uh, vlan uh, virtual lan uh, virtual lan then uh, actually what we apply in this network design we will discuss it later the vlan switch um the uh, where need to put firewall then where to put servers then uh, we use bgp so what is bgp border gateway protocol and next the implementation so if we go to our previous slide hope you can see a video right okay first of all i pause it okay let's discuss something about this network we will uh, took a small uh, we will look at a small scale campus network design as an example and we have designed it in our campus uh, which will be shown directly to you at the workshop uh, tomorrow we will see the implementation uh, at the design in packet tracer okay uh, let's uh, as you know, uh, we have uh, three buildings in our campus uh, student hall uh, where there is around 200 uh, buildings or campus uh, then uh, teachers dormitory or teachers hall or teachers faculty and there is appro approximately um, 20 to 30 uh, faculty member then academic building uh, where near about uh, 50 staffs uh, 50 staffs uh, work okay then our uh, main objective what is the main objective is to connect all their devices through a network and provide network access to everyone to everyone means the students the teachers to the staffs and therefore we will like to create three in three individual network for this three building what is our three building student building teachers building and administ academic staff building okay okay so you can see here the labeling core level code uh, router distributed router switch etc okay uh, from this device we can see to design the network we use actually some component like router this is manageable switch this is unmanageable switch this is the router this is the router this is unmanageable switch i think you all can uh, see the video and my cursor okay now first of all uh, to provide internet access and service we have to get a internet connection from um, from local isp that means internet service provider you can see here is a rat red cable this is the red cable right okay 
this is the red cable and this red cable actually uh, for providing the isp connection okay it's from the isp network so you can see fast device as core router right this is the core router please see carefully the video and we will also set up this uh, use this setup to our uh, workshop okay so you can see here the core router and the red cable uh, the red cable is providing the isp connection okay now see what is the uh, router content but uh, first of all i want to say something that is uh, actually we are using the red cable this red cable is ethernet twisted pair but for isp connection to the device we can use uh, two line that is dedicated line or shared line we are using dedicated line so here we dedicate uh, use uh, our dedicated line for access and um, this dedicated line is via uh, two type uh, uh, cable or media that is ethernet uh, twisted pair cable or via optical fiber cable for use through uh media converter or sft what is sft what is uh, media converter twisted pair, pair cable i think you all get the concept in our previous lecture okay hope you can see some ports right mainly you can see the red cable red cable right this is isp line uh, that will enter into the core router this uh, router is named as microdit network router uh, uh, we can see the router name too here is the uh, router name see the microdic router uh, board uh, rb3011 uiasra this microdic router in fast layer using as a core router clearly remember using this router as a core router in core layer and we also use the same router in our distribution layer Two. Now we will see what is in this router. Okay. Okay. Now you can see this port. This is ETS. That is Ethernet port. Okay. This is an Ethernet port. There is ten Ethernet port. This is SFP port. This is a LED indicator, and this is USB port. Okay. so core router uh, basically run on the same public network on the backbone of the internet and can um, also connect the uh, distributed router for uh, multiple larger enterprise or community location the fast port is a uh, that means eta is the port it is a poe port what is poe port poe that that's mean power over ethernet we have connected the isp provided line to this port and uh, uh, here we have used microtik router as i said before this microtik router containing 10 ethernet port sfp indicator and usb port okay <clears throat> and as i said before we are using the red cable as our ethernet cable but if we use optical fiber then we will use any patch cord or any media converter or this sfp port so this sfp port is for optical fiber connection uh, for, uh, from the isp right okay okay
Okay, let's see here. It is ETA six, ETA seven, eight, nine, ten. That means this ten port. And there is also a monitor. You can see here a monitor too. So you can say here the leveling. This is ISP network. That means the red cable. This is the core router, right? So we can say that uh, we are using the Ethernet port one to connect the ISP network. We are using the router as our core router, and core router mainly connect the end points of the public network. Uh, what we actually say, Internet of Internet or network. Uh, network of network or internet uh, are formed by a internet connection of this router now we uh, uh, now our task is to provide this line to our distributed router to implement three network so this is a router uh, core router and the next layer is distributed layer this is core layer this is core router and next is distributed router this is distributed router you can see here from the core router port uh, ethernet port 2 uh, we use a cable that is uh, ip address containing 10.28.0.0/19 and this cable is connected with the distributed router okay and this di distributed router is as like the previous core router that is Microtic router and uh, we use the line this cable to connect core router and the distributed router so as i uh, uh, as you can see the logical diagram the core router and distributed router these two devices is devices connected to our uh, network right and it is implementing through the logical land so let's go to our video Okay, now uh, we can see here this is two router and uh, using this two router, this is core level and distributed level and then we use a distributed switch which is manageable. Now, uh, there have a uh, arised question, maybe I don't know you have the question or not but we can, uh, I want to say it. That is, uh, maybe there is a question that uh, why we are using core router and distributed router. That's mean two router. We can use one router, one switch. It can be also possible. But why we are using core router and also distributed router and the same router? Okay, at this point, some of you have maybe mm, think uh, correctly and uh, your question is also correct. Why it is? Then we can say uh, it is uh, for applying the VLAN. VLAN that means virtual local area network apart from the core network. 
We are going to implement three node network via VLAN, as I said before, but it can be possible that organization can require more VLAN implementation, as I said before, too, that you can require uh, one PC, then after you can uh, require, no, I want to add five or 10 PC, or you are using one VLAN, two VLAN, but you can require 10 VLAN for a 20 VLAN right so for implementation and need to maintain the critical organization for that reason distributed or age router must be specified individually i just uh, divide the age router and core router core router versus age router slide right there i uh, also mention one thing that distributed router or age router have complex connectivity and critical monitoring and management endpoints whereas core router again where core router have only connection with that uh, transmission of the data at a high rate that means core router focus on speed rather than connectivity of one device see here we use only one isp network but in many organization have more than one isp or provide link right provide line uh, there can be possible to use multiple isp network we have to uh, work in a active mode and another will be remain in a failover backup mode that's mean it for some reason in, or um, in for any reason any issues or any collision or any interference one isp fail to provide internet we will use second isp line and our distribution layer will not be affected by this that's why we are using two router okay and also for load balancing hope uh, you uh, who have the question in mind or who didn't think even think about this question uh, this uh, question and answer both is for you all now uh, we are creating three, three vlan for three individual devices uh, let's name them for a student for teacher and for academy so it's for a student it is vlan 10 uh, for teacher it is vlan 20 and for academic vlan 13 okay clear so for this we will use a distributed switch hope you can see the video Okay, what is this? BZP. As I said before, we apply some logic, some uh, switches, some protocol in our design. Uh, that is VLAN, switch, and BZP protocol to the router. Why BZP protocol to the router? In this, in the in this distributed router, we got a connection from the core router, right? From the core router. So it's a uh, in this video this is core router uh, uh, and that was the uh, distributed router or edge router right okay so via this first port and the core router second port is connected to the distributed router right here we use bzp bzp means border gateway protocol to make connection between two routers for distributed layer bzp 65001 is assigned and for core router we assign assign bzp 65002 why using bzp border guard we will uh, discuss it in the slide okay just uh, remember this okay uh, in this implementation 
uh, and dynamic host configuration protocol uh, or we implement or enable this DACP server for each network to connect it with IP address. Okay, clear? I think all of you are clear. Now, these VLAN are distributed via two Ethernet port to distributed router. Here, we connect this interface to a distributed switch. And here, we have used Cisco switch. Cisco is, um, it may be uh, S5, uh, sorry, SZ35028P because it uh, pro, um, containing 28 ports. This is manageable switch and containing 28 ports. Here, we, this is connection for distributed router and this connection is for VLAN 10. This connection is for VLAN 20 and the uh, next VLAN connection is for academic. Uh, that's mean uh, VLAN 30. And we use here, one, two, three, four, five, four for VLAN 10. Uh, there is maybe raised another question that if there is a uh, VLAN 10 for student, then why we require port uh, one, two, three, four, five? We can use one port and one line also uh, only. Here is an uh, uh, answer for you. That is, we have configured the port to the switch for VLAN. The first port of the switch is connected to the distributed router and it is using as trunk mode. We will also discuss about trunk mode later briefly. Okay, so uh, uh, think you, you think that uh, port 2 is containing VLAN 10. Okay, right. So to VLAN uh, port 10, it is for a student and to enable network access to the student. So we can use only one port, but think you have more than one dormitory, then what can happen? In PS2, there is uh, three or four dormitory for uh, boys and three or four dormitory for girls, right? And this uh, the dormitory distance is uh, far um, far from uh, SK hall to KM hall. Okay, so at this point you have multiple dormitory, so need to provide separate line with the same network. That's why we reserve uh, port two, three, four, five, and six for VLAN ten. And then uh, port 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 for uh, teachers, and um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, these port are for academic building. So we have also created three different uh, DHCP IP pool for three individual network. You can see three individual network line, right? This one, this one, and this one. Okay, see the video. You, and uh, we have assigned this line or assigned this uh, uh, connection with IP range for a student, uh, for teacher, and for academy. Here is the connection to the access layer. Now we are going to the access layer. Here you can see this is for a student, this is for teacher, and another is for the academy. So the student VLAN 10 is 10.28.32.0 slash 19. Uh, for teacher, this is 10.28.64.0 slash 20, uh, 19. And for academic, there is a uh, another IP address that is 10.28.96.0 slash 19. And this is a unmanaged switch. What is unmanaged switch? We use managed switch in our uh, previous layer and then the managed switch to the router okay 
so what did we, uh, what we can see here the fast home router provide the connect connectivity to the student hall and the next connectivity is for teachers dormitory and uh, the third and last one is for academic building and we name it is as id that is service set identifier for a student uh, if i can uh, show you the Mm, internet connection in mobile connection then it will be uh, more interactive to you hope this network is understandable to you uh, and uh, you can compare this physical layer and logical layer this is unmanageable switch because the all port is acting like vlan 10 and you can't apply any other villain uh, like villain 20 or 30 to this port uh, it can be causes of error okay so that was our uh, video footage for hard, uh, hardware configuration hope you all enjoy this uh, so let's jump to the next slide so you can see here the logical diagram and physical diagram. This is the organized way. The level are clear here. The core router, distributed router, the switch, right? Okay. If there is any problem, uh, then please uh, ask question into the Q, uh, question and answer box. Uh, I will try to give you the um, uh, answer after this session. Okay, let's jump to the concept of switch. Uh, I'm talking to the uh, host. Uh, how many times I have left? Okay. Uh, Please, so can you? How, only 10 minutes, many, madam. How many slides? Sorry? Uh, so only for, eight uh, minutes now. How many slides uh, you have left? Uh, maybe uh, five or six. Okay, I think you can continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. And in, in the meantime, okay, uh, okay uh, dear participants, so we uh, will email you the uh, link for the exam. In the meantime, okay, you can continue. I think no question. I have already answered the most of the question. Uh, so if you have uh, uh, remaining question, I will give you after end of the lecture. Okay, you can continue. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, we are using the switch. What is the feature of the switch? Actually, when a switch receives a broadcast frame, it actually forwards the frame out of each of the port, except the ingress port, that means the coming port, where the broadcast frame was received. Okay? And when two switches, you can see the uh, picture, if two switches are, or more switches are connected, then the broadcast domain is increased because the broadcast is propagated from the switch to switch and the, all of the end uh, devices. Now we can see a table, right? Okay, VLAN switch maintain a table that is used to determine how to forward traffic through a switch and using the example shown in this figure, uh, a uh, message, uh, suppose a, a message entered in port 1, but port 1 is containing destination this is double e but the message entered into the port one with destination address ea but ea is destined at uh, port four then the switch look up the outgoing port of ea and forward the traffic out of the port now you can say here the uh, all of the messages broadcasted to all of the port then it is maybe a security issue that's why we use the VLAN. What is the concept of VLAN? Concept is that we can divide or 
partition uh, make a partition or segmentation of our switch port that means we have 28 ports but we can use uh, five ports or two ports or 10 ports for a specific vlan and if you forward any package then uh, like uh, for a student package if any student send a packet it will receive by all the student not the teacher and not the academic uh, staff okay this is the concept of vlan in switch then what happened if uh, there is no vlan that means network with without vlan see here in this uh, figure this is a broadcast s1 s2 and s3 switch if pc1 broadcast a message to a uh, specific device or for faculty member this is faculty member this is faculty pc and this is faculty pc so pc1 is trying to broadcast a message to pc4 but without vlan the broadcast broadcast message will be received by all of the connected devices like pc2 3 that means student and guest uh, pc uh, five student and pc6 guest and also pc4 faculty and this is not sql right that's why we use this vlan see what happened after uh, we using the vlan in a network if faculty or vlan 10 is trying to broadcast a uh, message then it will be only it will only receive by pc4 that means vlan 10 and other vlan will not receive the message this is the importance of vlan and uh, in the next classes we will discuss uh, discuss this vlan and switch and the characteristics of vlan characteristics of switch trunk uh, briefly um, uh, in details now where to put the firewall right and why actually we put the firewall this is the question <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> At, uh, okay, you can see here a picture that firewall is between border router and core router. The, uh, actually, firewall generally work uh, at layer three and layer four of the OSI model. Actually, uh, we you can say it's as a security device, network security device, um, monitors or filters incoming and outgoing network traffic based on an organization privacy. That means if you want to block a specific IP that I do not want any um, transmission from this IP, the firewall will, will block this, okay? Or you can say that I just want uh, uh, three or four specific IP will send me the message or transmit the data. Otherwise, all will be blocked. The uh, fire will, uh, firewall will do the same thing. Uh, the role of the firewall is to examine data packets and traveling to or from the host. Essentially, it is uh, called. Uh, you can say it is the barrier that sits between a private ne uh, private internal network and the uh, public network okay so you can also place the firewall like this now uh, where to to server actually uh, location of the server if i uh, want to say something about location of the uh, server then uh, you can say uh, it must be placed in the uh, building access and the building this or building distribution layer uh, actually server should be on a location where actually there is a uh, good power and air conditioning because there is a possibility uh, to um, danger happen dangerous situation with the server that's why need the air conditioning always uh, in the server room okay uh, here you can see five uh, or some steps uh, for setting up a server in your organization like uh, select the server hardware then select the server uh, operating system choose a good server location see here the location is very very important then configure the server and implement the server security okay next uh, 
you can also see here a full diagram where this is internet and uh, from this internet to uh, switch we use here a firewall to protect our uh, incoming and outgoing data and uh, to the switch we use here a server and like other devices like network printer wireless access point PC, and etc okay uh, in our physical diagram, we said about border guard protocol, right? A gate, uh, actually border guard protocol is a uh, dynamic routing protocol, a gateway protocol that enables the internet to exchange routing information between autonomous system. It's make peering possible. Okay, quickly adapt to send packets through another reconnection if one internet path goes down that means uh, use many connection with two routers if one is down then uh, it pass to another uh, uh, connection or another path and interdomain routing protocol that use the path vector routing uh, with the routing operating performance between two routers okay so uh, in summary what we can say that uh, uh, when, um, border gateway protocol uh, actually a gateway protocol that enable the uh, internet and exchange routing information right and also we can say that um, border gateway protocol basically offers the network uh, stability that uh, guardian's router can quickly adapt to send packets through another reconnection uh, and it makes the routing decision based on the path rules uh, or network policy uh, when you have a routing uh, network router, router uh, that connects to other network it does not know which network is best one to send its data to then what happened actually bgp takes into consideration all the different pairing options a router has and choose the one closest which one is closest to where the router and each potential peer communications or communicates the routing information it has and get um, uh, stored within a routing information based that is ri B and border guard can access the information and use it to choose the best pairing option. So, uh, in the uh, last se session, we can say that uh, in previous session, we just see the basic campus network physical diagram and the uh, implementation. Uh, you have to install and use packet tracer to implement the design that will be conduct with uh, second class that means tomorrow class uh, connect uh, what is the mind you have to remind that is connect all the given devices through a network and provide internet access to everyone like you have component what router switch uh, access point manageable switch unmanageable switch etc create three individual network for three buildings uh, what i have said that is for a student, teacher, and academic, then implement the dynamic host configuration protocol. Then uh, VLAN are distributed via two Ethernet port of distribution router and use border gateway to make communication between two routers. And that was all about our campus uh, network design. So if you have any question, then you can ask me, uh, or I think. Uh, Mm, it is little bit clear to you uh, that how to create any network design or how to design a uh, campus network and hope you will see the implementation logically in packet tracer who can't join the workshop okay thank you uh, thank you orpita i think uh ten push in uh, they have uh already sent the message box i try to answer their question so if you have more than uh, more if you have any other question you can uh, write uh, the question answer box uh, we will uh, share the answer i think uh, our uh, panel member already sent you the assessment link uh, you can go, uh, now open the assessment link and submit the assessment form 
uh, the assessment uh, form will be disabled 530. So within a time, within a 530, you need to submit the form. Dear Rotita, could you explain yes, again the BGP? Someone asked us uh, about BGP. Just a little bit uh, shortly, you may clear, clarify this uh, issue. BGP. Just BGP slide, okay. Just okay, only short answer. Okay, okay. Sir, uh, okay, uh, who asked, I don't know, but I just mentioning you that BGP is a dynamic routing protocol basically for router, to router connection. That's mean uh, when you are connecting to routers, then it will um, easy for you to communicate to each other. That's why we use the uh, border gateway protocol. This protocol that's enable the uh, actually internet to exchange the routing information. Okay. Yep. And uh, basically, uh, it will helpful for uh, manage the balance, load balance, uh, heavy uh, to avoid huge unexpected traffic. We can also uh, create a BGP within the, the network. Uh, okay. Also, the uh, help to forward the packet from local ne area network to uh, I think the core core network. BGP also also helps the packet forwarding also. Any other questions? Okay, I think uh, we may start the evaluation session, assessment session. If uh, so we can, start. We, we can. I can finish the slide or uh, stop the slide. Okay, you can uh, finish okay. the slide. I think. Okay, if okay, the participants you. have any questions, any much. other questions, you may drop your question. Uh, in the chat, chat box or question answer session. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Urpita Haladar, for your nice presentation.